Whoa! Oh Jeez! Is anyone down there? Come and join us. Make a noise while you move. You can use all their energy. You can shuffle towards us if you want. What up my homies? Today we are going to be looking at another Ouija Brothers video and this one is called We Had No Idea What Awaited Us Real Paranormal and they are looking at the Stack Rock Fort and uh, this is a new place that I didn't even know existed and I thought it would be a cool idea to check it out so that's what we will be doing and as always, I have my notes and I will just be relaying the information that I received while watching the video and channeling simultaneously. So I am going to insert the clips. Um, some of them will have sound, some of them will not have sound. And we'll go from there. So let's, let's go into this. First things first, just by looking at the thumbnail, the residual energy in this place is pretty strong and I don't know if it has to do with like the water. Water is a really good conductor of energy. It can conduct electricity and it's really good with conducting energy, making it stronger. Um, it's just, that's just how it be really. And Two, water can hold memory. There are several experiments that you can look up on Google with water holding memory and stuff like that. And I recommend looking up those experiments. It's interesting. But I feel like that could also have to do with it because the Stack Rock Fort is on this miniature island and it's surrounded by water. But looking at the thumbnail, I literally hear a bunch of men yelling, the clinking of metal and other loud explosive sounds just by looking and feeling the thumbnail, if you know what I mean. Feel the thumbnail, be the thumbnail. Now, as they enter the area, just by listening to the surroundings, I feel like, and they do actually kind of touch upon this a little bit in the video, but because it's an island surrounded by water, there's waves, winds traveling through the building or structure, whatever you want to call it. It has these natural sounds that can sound very ominous. It can sound like whispers. It can sound like voices. It can sound like footsteps. Like, there's a lot of illusions, if you want to call it that, that the wind creates and the water creates while traveling through the fort and crashing on the rocks. So I automatically knew that them trying to catch concrete evidence, concrete paranormal evidence, was going to be difficult because there was so much noise going on, plus the animals that were there. Like, there's a lot of seagulls, there's a lot of, like, birds, there's a lot of other things that made it difficult and makes it difficult for anyone to catch solid, concrete proof that what they experience is actually paranormal and not something that is naturally occurring. So I do want to point that out. And, I mean, they still do a good job capturing the evidence that they catch, but also telling the audience, like, hey, this could easily be debunkable, but maybe you guys can sort that out for yourself. But, but, I feel like regardless of the paranormal stuff that they catch, I feel like it would still be a really great experience just to like witness and see that history and just, I don't know. 
I kind of just want to go there to meditate. Not even really to catch paranormal stuff, but just to sit there and meditate. For me, ocean and the sea is my happy place. Like, being on an island, even though it's, like, near whales, I don't know if it's consider like, I don't know if it's technically in the territory of whales. I just know it's kind of close to whales. But for me, I probably wouldn't go there for paranormal stuff. I would go there for calm, relaxation, get my feng shui on, and my... Ohm, or what is it? Ohm. But, I don't know. To me, it looked really neat. I would totally visit there. The first psychic impression I get is that it didn't feel like it has experienced much battle. And when I say that, I mean like, it didn't feel like there were people on that island or in that fort, like, battling for their lives. I feel like it's seen some things, like, around the vicinity, but I don't feel like it had fighting on the actual premises. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know, to, it, like, if that can be validated or not, I'm not sure. But now with common sense, with the World Wars 1 and 2, Europe, in general, was very... They had... Europe countries had a lot of involvement in all the world wars. That's why I mean, like, I feel like it has seen things, especially around the waters. But I don't think it had any battles on the land. Because when I see the residual energy, I'm not seeing battles. I'm seeing some training routines... And, like, building it, like, those types of energies are stronger than if there was a battle. Now, if this was, like, a battlefield, I'd be getting hits left and right. But I'm not. The energy doesn't seem too thick. But I think, to the water surrounding it helps transmute any of that energy that was left behind, especially like any of the negative energy. But there is some residual. They did say 150 men like lived there at one time and utilized that fort for quite a few decades. So there's definitely residual. And plus I can hear the noises of men and I can hear like the metal stuff. I don't know if they had cannons that they actually used or if they were just there just in case but I hear the clanking and moving around of like metal so I feel like that place was used but maybe more so for training and getting stuff together in case it needed to defend the space but I don't feel like there was much fighting on it. And I feel like there, like I said before, there was a lot of residual energy in the creating of the structure. But with that being said, I do feel like there was an accident at some point involving a man hurting his leg. I see a light brown haired man laying on the ground trying to hold himself up, kind of like supporting him as he's laying, but he's like, trying to look at his leg and his leg looks like it's bloodied and shredded and nasty and it's like from right above his knee down to his foot his pants are shredded so it looks like it could either have gotten blown up or crushed it's hard to tell but that came pretty quick and his pants were like a tan color. Of course, a lot of it was covered in blood, but I do see that. Now, that's why I feel like it was an accident, because if it didn't see any battle, um, it had to have been an accident. I mean, at least that's what my, my gut tells me. And then, where they have like that cutout, 
where you can walk and look out at the water. For whatever reason, I see a pissing contest, like a literal pissing contest, where a few men are trying to see how far they can pee over the edge into the ocean, which I thought was hilarious. Could that be metaphorical for something? Probably. Or could it have been they literally tried to have a pissing contest? Probably. Who knows? But I thought that was funny. At 20 minutes, 10 seconds in, there's a lot of clanking metal sounds that they are hearing. And that's... So I would say part of it's the residual energy, but not all of it. But a good amount of it is. The birds are landing and messing around with some of the metal fixtures and leftover chains, anchors, whatever's metal. It's like I can hear their feet and some of them have like claws. Now, seagulls, I'm pretty sure they have web feet, but there's other animals there and you can hear the clinking and it could be their beaks, who knows, or them fixing their nests and clinking. I do see that going on. And I also see the wind and the water affecting some of the metal fixtures as well. But not all of it is natural. Some of it is residual. So I do want to point that out. And they do have a hard time trying to decipher what's natural versus paranormal, which that's understandable because there's, like I said, a lot of stuff going on. However, around 20 minutes and 20 seconds in, I do see a male earthbound spirit hanging around. Now, he kind of looked like he could have been in his mid-30s, but there wasn't much going on with him. He was just lurking around, and he did stand behind them a little bit, but he didn't seem all that negative. Now, earthies, if you don't know whether they're good or bad, they need energy from the living. They need it. So they will still drain your energy. Even if they really don't want to, they have to. But in terms of like personality and I would say this one, he wasn't really bad. It's just, again, he needs the energy. Now, they're not confined to where they're at. So if that one needed energy really bad, he could go to the neighboring town to get some. But I wouldn't say it was an evil or descended earthy. I think it was just one chilling around the area. And he most likely is from that fort area. So that didn't really surprise me. And around 21 minutes and 41 seconds in, I do feel a presence in that doorway and it's making me sleepy. And then, okay, here's the thing. During my channeling and watching, I had to take two naps. <sighs> two naps. The first one was like a 30 minute nap, which turned into a three hour break, but it wasn't all nap. And then the second one was towards the end where that was like a four hour nap, like pure sleeping. But sometimes I just let it happen because sometimes it's how I get information. However, this time I did not get information during that nap, which made me sad because then it felt like I wasted a lot of time. But... Also, I drank an energy drink, so I was like, why am I tired? It's like the caffeine did the opposite, which is weird, but sometimes that happens. But also, I noticed that the Earthbound Spirit was not the only thing there. There was actually another entity there. I did start feeling pain on the left side but like right under my rib, but ab above my belly button, which was weird because I usually don't get pain there. My pain is usually like ovary pain. So for me, that's higher than it normally is. So I know it's not me. 
And then, like, towards the end, before I fell asleep again, I did see two black hollowed eyes and a large black mouth, with the rest of the detail being concealed by, like, dark gray smoke. The energy was feeling like a thought form that was most likely produced from the output of negative energy, from the negative emotions, from those that once inhabited the fort. Not many people visit this location, so it feels like this entity is desperate for energy, and I feel like it, it was that zapping my energy more so than the Earthbound Spirit. The Earthbound Spirit almost didn't seem conscious because he was kind of just like walking around. However, when they did come to a certain area, he went to them and he started affecting the one camera. And it made it stop recording and you can even hear the the lady be like, "Oh my god, it stopped recording on its own." That was him. But back to the thought form. This thing is desperate for energy. And this thing isn't fully formed as like a cohesive full being. This thing is kind of like in the beginning stages and I feel like it never was able to fully form because there's not enough energy or negative energy that's being produced from A, there's nobody there, that place is abandoned, but two, the water surrounding the island did transmute some of that energy. So it's kind of like stuck in this partially formed, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Technically, the thought form could travel and get more energy if it wanted to, like the earthbound spirit, but it feels like, I don't want to say it's trapped, but it feels kind of limited in where it goes. And I think part of that desperation of it trying to get energy could be a mixture of things. It's not fully formed, so it's trying to get as much energy as it can to do that. But also, too, I feel like some of that desperate emotions kind of fed into it from those that were living there to create part of it. So it's like it drew some of that desperate energy from those people. Not all of it is desperate energy, but part of it is. And yeah. But that place, it doesn't feel very active. Even though I see two things there, I feel like they're not too much of a problem. If the new owners wanted to, they could cleanse it and it wouldn't be a problem. Like, I've seen places more haunted than that. And honestly, it's not a problem. I've seen little houses more of a problem than that. Honestly, my freaking street what I, where I live on is more of a problem than the fort. So, I don't know. But, anyways, I am going to call it there. I hope you found this video interesting or kind of informative. There's not much um, educational lessons to be learned really because they had a hard time debunking or at least trying to decipher which was paranormal activity versus natural activity so uh yeah guys um thank you so much for watching and i will see y'all soon peace